video topic was suggested by, well, a lot of people. Put forward your ideas and topics by clicking the form below. And if you don't have any ideas right now, then don't worry. There's going to be a link to the form in the description of every video going forward, so feel free to add them in when you come up with them. If you've been paying attention to global news lately, it's been hard to avoid the ongoing crisis in South Africa, with violence in the country reaching its highest point since apartheid ended. So let's unpack what's happening, who's being impacted, and the politics behind this violence. So there are sort of two separate stories behind these current protests. The first story, which you might call the narrow story, is about the African National Congress and its two leaders, Jacob Zuma and Cyril Ramaphosa. The second story, though, which you might call the wide story, is about South Africa's wider socio-economic problems and how they've left the country vulnerable to political instability. Let's start with the narrow story, though, the African National Congress, otherwise known as the ANC. Today, the ANC is the main political party in South Africa, but during apartheid, they were the leading anti-apartheid political movement in the country when they committed to ending apartheid and extending full voting rights to South Africans. In the first post-apartheid elections in 1994, the ANC were led by Nelson Mandela, and they won a majority with 63% of the vote, securing them 252 of the 400 available seats. While their vote share has decreased over the years, they've always won more than 55% of the popular vote. In 2009, the ANC were led by Jacob Zuma, who became the president of South Africa. Zuma had previously served as deputy president from 1999 to 2005, and elected as leader of the ANC in 2007, defeating then-president Thabo Mbeki in the 52nd National ANC Conference. Anyway, all you really need to know about Zuma in this video is that his reign was plagued with allegations of corruption and mismanagement. During his tenure, wages stagnated, debt to GDP ballooned from 31% of GDP in 2009 to 51.1% in 2018, unemployment rose from 21.5% in 2008 to 28% in 2018, and inequality didn't get any better either. On the corruption side of things, a lot of the allegations against Zuma revolve around the Gupta family. At least three of Zuma's immediate family have business connections with the Guptas, a billionaire family who own a business empire in South Africa. And they've been accused of influencing policy, interfering with ministerial appointments, and in 2017, leaked emails allegedly showed that they've received millions of dollars in public money that was supposed to go to poor farmers. In a separate legal matter, Zuma is currently charged with 16 counts of corruption, racketeering, fraud and money laundering, including a total of 783 illegal payments, to which he pleaded not guilty in May 2021. You get the point though, Zuma isn't exactly squeaky clean. Anyway, somewhat unsurprisingly, Zuma's popularity began falling during the course of his premiership, and by 2017, it was down to negative 50%. With Zuma's support waning, in December 2017, the ANC elected Cyril Ramaphosa as their new leader. Under pressure, Zuma created the Zondo Commission in January of 2018, led by Chief Justice Ray Zondo, which was supposed to investigate allegations of corruption and state capture. This wasn't enough, though, to assuage tensions, and in February 2018, the ANC forced Zuma to step down as president, to be replaced by Ramaphosa. Ramaphosa then won the 2019 elections with 58% of the vote, the ANC's lowest ever vote share. Anyway, the Zondo Commission asked Zuma to appear before it for five days in July of 2019, and during his appearance, Zuma claimed that there was a foreign-backed conspiracy against him, accused the commission of being biased, and then refused to turn up on the fourth day. In December 2020, following 16 months of trying and failing to get Zuma to reappear, the Constitutional Court demanded that Zuma appeared on February 4th, 2021. Zuma didn't appear though, and on the 29th of March, the Constitutional Court issued Zuma a 15-month prison sentence for contempt of court. And then, on July 17th, Zuma handed himself over to the police and was admitted to Escort Correctional Centre. And that brings us to today, where protests have broken out across the country. 
According to reports, the current protests have been partially organised by Zuma loyalists, who are upset by his imprisonment and want to undermine Ramaphosa. The unrest originated on the 19th of July in Zuma's province and stronghold, before spreading to South Africa's industrial heartland on July 11th. After six days of violence, during which more than 200 people lost their lives, Ramaphosa announced on July 14 that 25,000 troops would be deployed to stem the violence, and described protests as an attempted insurrection. And since then, more than 2,500 people have been arrested in relation to the protests. So that's the narrow story. Dogged by corruption allegations, Zuma was replaced by Ramaphosa, and when he ended up in jail, his supporters organised protests to get him out. However, this isn't a total explanation of what's happened. While Zuma's imprisonment might be the proximate cause, the protests have been enabled by wider structural problems in South Africa. South Africa has been politically unstable for years, with glaring economic inequality and terrifying poverty rates. According to the World Bank, South Africa has a Gini coefficient of 0.63, making it the most unequal country in the world. And that's at least in part because more than half of the population lives in poverty, unemployment stands at 32%, including 75% of young people under the age of 24. And unsurprisingly, the pandemic has only made things worse. According to official data, some 65,000 South Africans have died of COVID, making it the worst hit African nation, and they're currently suffering through a tragic third wave. So that's the wider story. Whatever the specific event that triggered the protests, some sort of political upset has been coming for a while now. Because when you've got massive wealth inequality, 75% of young people unemployed, and a pandemic, well, what else can you expect? So what happens next? Well, it looks like the army has managed to calm things down, but it's not a long-term solution to either the narrow Zuma problem or the country's wider structural issues. When it comes to the Zuma problem, Ramaphosa needs to find a way of either getting rid of Zuma and his allies, or harmoniously integrating them into his administration, because the Zuma-Ramaphosa split within the ANC and South Africa's government more generally is making South Africa essentially ungovernable, and making it impossible for Ramaphosa to solve any of the wider structural problems. But what do you think? What will or should happen in South Africa next? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As I mentioned, this video was chosen by our viewers, and you too can suggest topics by clicking the form below. You should also subscribe to the channel to be notified when new videos come out. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that is in the description.